One very common and vexing problem in equilibrium chemistry is to be asked to find the concentration of some reactant or product at equilibrium given the initial concentration of the reactants and the equilibrium constant. I'm James Wahlberg and I'm going to show you how to use an ice table to solve this kind of problem. Let's get started. In order to find the equilibrium concentration of a reactant or product by using an ice table, we need a couple of things. We'll have to be given the initial concentration of each reactant and product, and we'll have to have the value of the equilibrium constant, the KEQ. So we don't need much, but what we'll need is a good strategy. This strategy depends on a couple of things. First, we will set up and use an ice table. If you haven't watched the previous videos about using ice tables, you should go back and do that before working this problem. Besides the ice table, we will use the balanced equation and the stoichiometric coefficients in that equation to develop expressions for the equilibrium concentrations of every species in the system. We will then plug those expressions into the KEQ expression and solve for the unknown concentrations x. And then finally, we will use the value of x back into the expression for equilibrium concentration using the stoichiometric coefficients to figure out exactly what the concentration is at equilibrium. Let's look at a specific example and I'll show you exactly how this works. One specific kind of equilibrium system is an acid dissociation reaction. In this case, the Ka is the KEQ. That's really all a Ka is, is the equilibrium expression for an acid dissociation reaction. Here we have acetic acid and we have the reaction in which acetic acid interacts with water to give us the acetate anion and the hydronium ion. We're told that the Ka for this is 1.76 times 10 to the minus fifth. The specifics of the problem are that we have two moles of acetic acid added to 10 liters of water and we're being asked to find the equilibrium concentration of the acetate ion. So to get started, let's set up our ice table. And we know that these two moles of acetic acid are in 10 liters of water. Therefore, the initial concentration of acetic acid is 0.2 molar. The concentration of acetate anion and hydronium ion for our purposes is zero because we're starting just with the acetic acid. Notice that we're also going to ignore the concentration of water because for all intents and purposes in equilibrium problems and aqueous solutions, the concentration of water doesn't change. So we don't consider that in our calculations. Speaking of change, the amount of acetic acid that dissociates will represent as X. And since we're going to lose from the concentration of acetic acid, we'll call this minus X. But for every X moles of acetic acid that dissociate, we will get X moles of acetate ion produced and X moles of hydronium ion produced. Therefore, at equilibrium, the acetic acid concentration will be 0.2, the original, minus X, that's the change, and the acetate concentration at equilibrium will be X, because 0 plus X is X, and the same goes for hydronium ion concentration. Now the problem is asking us to solve for the acetate ion concentration at equilibrium, and notice that really is x. So what we have to do is come up with an algebraic way to solve for the value of x. The thing that will get us there is the Ka expression. And remember that the Ka is really just an equilibrium expression. So here it is. The Ka is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactant. Now in terms of our unknown x, this Ka takes this form. Each of the products is represented by x, and the reactant, acetic acid, is represented by 0.2 minus x. So now we've written our Ka expression in terms of x, our unknown quantity. Our next step will be to rearrange this and try to get x by itself as much as possible. So first, let's multiply through by the denominator, 0.2 minus x, multiply both sides by that, 
And then we'll take those two x's multiplied by each other and represent that as x squared. Distributing the ka over that 0.2 minus x term, we find that we have 0.2 ka minus ka times x equals x squared. Now the fact that we have an x squared terms means that we are really in quadratic territory. So if we rearrange these terms to put it in standard quadratic form, we have x squared plus kax minus 0.2 ka equals zero. And of course, the reason that we set this all equal to zero is because now we have a standard quadratic expression where the coefficient a is one, the coefficient b is equal to the ka, and the term c is minus 0.2 times the ka. Once we've identified these specific terms in the quadratic expression, we can plug them into our good friend, the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. When we do that, the quadratic formula looks like this, simply substituting a, b, and c into the quadratic formula. Carrying out the arithmetic then, we find that the value of x is 1.87 times 10 to the minus third. Now, when you actually solve this, you will find that there are two solutions, one positive and one negative. However, the idea of a negative concentration doesn't really have any meaning. So of course, we want the positive root, the positive solution. So therefore, we select the value of x as 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3. If you recall that x represents the acetate ion concentration and the hydronium ion concentration, we have really arrived at our answer because x equals what we were asked to find, the acetate concentration. And we now know that the acetate concentration is 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3. So there's a number of steps. There's a little bit of algebra. There's some quadratic formula involved in solving these problems. But I hope you see that with a good strategy and by being comfortable by using an ice table, these problems really aren't so bad. If you look at the next video in our series, you'll see that there's actually often an even shorter way to solve problems like this, but you have to be careful about the assumptions that you make. I hope to see you in the next video.